as a part of Russia's efforts to modernize its aviation industry and reduce dependence on foreign parts, the IL-96 was considered for a major upgrade. The plan involves converting it into a twin-engine aircraft using PD-35 engines. These are powerful, domestically developed turbofan engines designed for long-haul, wide-body planes. The PD-35 engine has already passed initial testing. It is seen as a symbol of progress in Russian aerospace. The engine produces around 35 tons of thrust. A twin-engine EL-96, once a classic four-engine wide-body airliner, is one of the key applications under consideration. The original four-engine design is now seen as outdated. The idea, first introduced in 2019 and gaining attention by 2025, suggests replacing the EL-96's four PS-90A engines with two PD-35 engines. This switch could improve fuel efficiency, lower maintenance costs, and extend the aircraft's life. Reports say the Russian government and presidential administration are interested in this modernization effort. However, this proposal has sparked a divided response in Russia's aviation circles. The debate intensified after the PD-35 was shown on an open-air test stand. Aviation expert Oleg Panilov believes the idea is unrealistic. He argues it would require major changes to the aircraft's structure, especially the wings. That includes adapting to engines over 3 meters in size and reinforcing the fuselage and landing gear. He also points to the high costs and lack of domestic demand for many wide-body aircraft. Pantelov believes building a new airliner from scratch would be a better solution. One that uses modern materials and systems suitable for export. The current low production rate of 3 to 4 IL-96s per year is expected to meet domestic demand for the next decade or more. In contrast, expert Roman Guzarov admits there are technical challenges, but remains hopeful. He says a twin-engine EL-96 with PD-35s is technically possible. The PD-35's size and weight, about 10 tons, 8 meters long, and 3 meters in fan diameter, make mounting it on a wing difficult. But Guzarov believes it can be done. He calls for deep engineering updates, reinforcing wings, changing landing gear, and modifying the fuselage. Gusarov adds that Russia has the technical skills and industrial base for such a task. Still, he acknowledges issues like the lack of digital models for the old IL-96, the high use of manual labor, and complex coordination with suppliers. Even so, he argues that the efficiency gains might justify the high costs and long production times. No well-known example in aviation shows a four-engine wide body being directly converted to a two-engine version. Such a conversion is extremely difficult. It requires changes in structure, aerodynamics, and safety certification. Instead, the industry has focused on building new two-engine planes from the ground up. These are designed with the latest engine technology and meet strict ETOPS rules for long flights. The Boeing 777 and Airbus A350 are two such twin-engine planes built to replace older four-engine models like the Boeing 747 and Airbus A340. This discussion also touches on wider goals in Russian aviation. It highlights the struggle for technological independence during geopolitical changes. It also reflects the choice between modernizing old aircraft like the IL-96 or designing new ones from scratch. The PD-35 engine is central to future Russian wide-body designs. It may also be used in joint projects like the China-Russia C-929 jet. While older four-engine aircraft are still flying, converting them to use just two engines is not practical. Modern aircraft are specifically built for twin-engine use over long distances. Changing an existing four-engine aircraft would need major redesigns. That includes changes to controls, fuel systems, and wings. As a result, turning the EL-96 into a two-engine aircraft would face unique and very difficult challenges. There is no true historical example of such a conversion in commercial aviation. In summary, 
The idea of a twin-engine EL-96 with PD-35 engines raises broader questions for Russia. Should it invest in upgrading old proven designs? Or should it create new planes built for future needs? Both sides agree the task is complex and costly, but they differ on which approach offers the best path forward for Russian aviation. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.